the sky is falling, the world is ending, we're all gonna die, and the NCLEX is changing. I'm John Haas, RN, founder of nursing.com, the best place to learn nursing. When we asked 7,000 nursing students how prepared they were for next-gen NCLEX, just 30% said that they were, felt like they would be ready when the time comes, and another 48% said either kill me now or I know just a couple things about it. Now, when we asked nurse educators, just one of all the educators we asked, only one, said they felt like they were prepared. The rest said things like, I'm dreading it, or they've given us nothing. In this video, I'm going to show you why everything we thought about nursing education must change for us to face this new reality of next-gen NCLEX. And I've got a few notes down here below, so I'm gonna be reading from those notes a little bit as I share with you some information and some stats about the NCLEX and things like that. It is projected that a total of 1.2 million new RNs are going to be needed to address the current nursing shortage by 2030. And without an industry-wide innovation along the entire course of the nursing journey, we are literally on a collision course with an ominous nursing shortage. The nursing journey looks like this. You start when you apply to nursing school, you get into nursing school, you prepare and take the NCLEX, and then you begin your journey as a first year nurse and beyond. The problem is bureaucracy and over-dependence on organizations combined with a deprioritization of the patient has put us on this ominous collision course. The final step in becoming a registered nurse is licensing. The entire purpose of licensing is simply to ensure competency coming out of nursing school so that we can be sure that we're protecting the patient. And while this sounds really, really good, how are we doing this? How are we judging competency? Historically, we've done this with a single examination, the NCLEX, taken in an isolated booth with headphones on, reading and selecting answers on a computer screen or on a piece of paper. The NCSBM, which is the organization that writes the NCLEX, has long been accepted as the singular gatekeeper to judging new nurse competency and providing licensing. In their own words, they say this, one of the many ways the NCSBN fulfills this mission is by providing a defensible method of assessing a candidate's competence. Specifically, the NCSBN creates and administers two minimal competency examinations. In other words, since its founding in 1978, the NCSBN has been determining new nurse competency based on a single written and computerized examination, the NCLEX. So how do they determine how to make this exam and how difficult to make this exam in order to judge competency? This is what they say, this is what the NCSBN says, that each year a sample of nursing professionals, which makes making up uh, educators and hospital staff, is sent a written survey that solicits their opinions concerning the competence of the current cohort of entry level registered nurses. So this is done with a survey sent to educators and uh, hospital staff. Now educators and hospital staff respond that between 92 and 93 percent of new grads are competent to practice despite their pass or fail status of the NCLEX. So the NCSBN goes about adjusting the ease of passing the NCLEX to try to set it high enough in their words to protect the public by being a barrier to incompetent nurses yet also setting it low enough that competent nurses are not detained from gaining their license. So how is this working out? How is this method of assessing competence working out for all of us? Well, in 2018, the NCSBN stated in a video this. In fact, we may not be measuring the right thing. We still don't know. When the next-gen NCLEX was conceived years ago, it was with the intent of getting a better view of how a new nurse might act in actual practice in the hospital. And to be fair, look, I agree 100% with the concept of next-gen NCLEX and feel that it really is a step in the right direction of understanding new nurse competence. But, and there is a huge but here, adequately gauging competence will never come from a single test. So what happens every three years when they go in and either make the test harder or easier? Now, every single time they've convened, it's never gotten easier, it's always gotten harder is that what you see is, is immediately there's this a, there's drop in the pass rate. It goes from what it used to be, they make it a little bit harder, and there's this drop. But over the course of the following three years, this starts to climb. The pass rate starts to climb post the initial drop 
as they make the test a little bit harder. And this phenomenon has held true since 1995 when I was able to go back and look at pass rates when computer adaptive testing was implemented, indicating that students and educators are learning how to teach to an exam and how to test to an exam over and over and over and over. Now, what they do is they accommodate to an existing standard just in time for it to change again and then adjust once more. So that they learn to teach and to take to an exam versus truly learning what they must know to be prepared as a good nurse. Look, this is creating a zero sum game, meaning there are no winners as we keep this system going. Educators are being held captive to a standardized exam. Students are required to learn for a test and not for a patient. And patients are left with nurses who can pass a test, but in the end may not be competent nurses until we stop teaching to a test Truly competent nurses may never be entering the floor and we're inhibiting ourselves from teaching what really must be known to work as a nurse on the floor and instead teaching to these exams. So what we're experiencing in nursing education isn't this problem with creating competent nurses. It's a problem with this testia, testing the wrong things the wrong way. And this is being amplified by an industry that has mistakenly over-prioritized a test to a point that good and competent nurses is being defined by simply how they perform on a single, single exam. Now the solution to all of this, look, the solution is that we have to start deprioritizing the test and move our shift towards truly learning. Being a competent nurse does not begin, nor is it gauged the day you exit the NCLEX exam. It begins day one of nursing school with how you're being taught and how you're absorbing information and how you're actually learning. When I was in nursing school, I felt a lot of times like I was being left to the wolves. Yeah, in each class I was given predictors and of course exams that I had to score a certain grade on in order to advance, but I wasn't being taught. I was being taught in order to pass these exams and ultimately pass the NCLEX exam. My mental health instructor had been a peds nurse. My farm teacher had been an OB nurse. I was being taught just enough to pass these end of semester exams and then God willing the NCLEX, but not learning. During this time, I had to develop a new method if I wanted to actually learn beyond an exam. Over this time, I remember nights in nursing school sitting in my bed with three different med surge books open, taking notes, drawing pictures, and reading until early into the morning. Sure, I'd ace that exam, I'd ace that end of semester exam, but I didn't feel like I knew the material. To me, it wasn't about an exam. It was about that post-op cardiac patient who was seconds away from coding that I knew I'd be taking care of all by myself in just a few months after I graduated nursing school. While that patient is coding, they don't care how well I did on the NCLEX. They want to know that I have the knowledge and skills to actually save their life. I knew a test was never gonna give me that confidence. I knew a test was never going to tell my patients that they could put their lives and their trust into my hands. I had to discover a higher level of learning beyond anything an exam would ever be able to provide or gauge. Something that would help me to master core content and feel confident in what I had learned. What I discovered during those long dark nights back in nursing school is what has come to be known inside nursing.com as the Core Content Mastery Method. The Core Content Mastery Method, or CCMM as we like to call it, enables educators and nursing students to easily identify the core content a learner must master, as well as provides an outline for creating and delivering that content in a learner-focused, multimodal environment, thereby delivering fast, relevant, and succinct content that fills in the knowledge gap. And the best part of all this is, is that it helps nursing students to learn and to understand material in a way that they can take it far into their career and it is entirely independent of any exam. When you learn this way, it doesn't matter how many times the NCSBN changes the passing standard. It doesn't matter what sort of question you're fed or what type of question you're fed. It doesn't even matter what floor you work on. Learning via the CCMM is the best way to master content, fill in gaps, and become a confident nurse. We use this method in the development of all of our lessons, all of our study tools, all of our questions on nursing.com. All of our educators are trained in CCMM, and each piece of multimodal content follows a review process 
that enables us to ensure that it adheres to CCMM. Now, what I wanna do now is I wanna share with you a handful of strategies we use inside nursing.com to teach via CCMM that you can start using today in your own studies. CCMM uses various components backed up by Bloom's Taxonomy and Universal Design for Learning. But today I wanna share with you just three creation techniques that we use. And I promise you, you can start using them today and they will save you hours of study time, but also help you retain information and fill in those gaps. The first tip is linchpins. A linchpin is a small piece of metal that holds the entire wagon wheel together. It's what keeps the wagon wheel on the wagon. And it's just this tiny, tiny piece of metal. In learning, a linchpin is a key piece of material that holds the entire concept together. Before you start diving into trying to understand some concept or some new nursing topic, determine what that is. Determine what that must know piece of information is. That one piece that if you understand, the entire concept starts to fit together. For example, to understand heart failure, you must first understand that the heart is really a pump and it's really pump failure. Blood stops flowing forward and backs up into the system. If you don't understand this, nothing else will make sense. If you do understand it, it becomes very, very, very easy to remember forever the signs and symptoms, the medications, and why we assess certain things and why we provide certain interventions. Now, once you understand that linchpin, everything else that you start learning simply becomes spokes on the wagon wheel. The second tip I wanna give you is something we call the why behind the what. Oftentimes, this is exactly what's missing in education broadly. Facts are taught, but the why is missing. I want you to dig for why. For example, we say acidosis causes hyperkalemia. That's a great fact, but why? Trying to just memorize lists of signs and symptoms and medications you give and things like that is a huge disservice to yourself. Eventually, you're gonna forget those things. But if you begin to understand the why behind the what, the why this sign and the symptom, the why this medication, those things last forever. Let's think of an example. The classic signs of diabetes mellitus are polydipsia, polyphagia, and polyuria. Okay, you can sit there and try to remember all three of those. You can create some sort of mnemonic to remember those. But why? Once you understand why, you can understand interventions, you can understand assessments, you can understand medications. Many of us would stop there, simply trying to memorize that list of symptoms. We don't stop there and you're not going to stop there. You're going to understand the why. Here we go. Excess blood sugar causes a hyperosmolar state and that causes fluids to shift out of the cell. This is cellular dehydration. You become really thirsty. You don't have liquid in your cells. Excess blood glucose gets dumped into the urine and water follows it, so we start peeing. Cells aren't getting the glucose and energy they need, so we need food. That's why all those things start to happen. It starts with this, uh, this hyperosmolar state. If we understand what that is, we begin to easily identify exactly what's going on. The last tip I want to give you is draw it. Draw everything. Even the simple things should be drawn. Patient's positioning, labs, anything. Everything can be drawn. This creates this connection between your brain and your hand of connecting these things, drawing these things, and those images are going to come back to you as you're sitting there on the floor. Sometimes even just writing a word as you say it can help you as a visual learner. Try underlining, circling, drawing arrows, make everything visual. This will help you engage with it. This will help the information stick. So those are really just the three simple tips I wanna give you to help you learn things. Look for the lin linchpins, try to understand the why behind the what, always asking questions, always starting big picture, and then understanding the small picture and moving forward, and then drawing everything. Look, what I want you to get from this video is just a couple things. The way nursing education is approached in the US today must change, and that's a good thing. Teaching to a test will never, ever, ever deliver improved patient's results. That's just an impossible ask. Patients are not select all that apply questions. They're unique individuals with complex comorbidities. As a system of nursing and nursing education, we must accept this and move toward learning versus teaching to an exam. The day the NCLEX is abolished as a sit-down, isolated batch of text-based questions with earphones on in a booth will be a good day for nursing in general. What I share with you are just three of the many strategies we use at nursing.com to help you fill in the gaps and gain the confidence you need and deserve to be an amazing nurse. In each of the 2,500 plus lessons, 2,000 plus study tools, and 7,000 plus questions, 
Over on nursing.com, we employ the CCMM to help you finally learn and understand in a way that this material will stick with you forever. And additionally, to help you really identify your gaps, if you're not sure what they are, you can take our simulated NCLEX exam, which pulls from all this different content that we have. It's called the SimCLEX, and it helps you pinpoint your unique individual weak points and gaps that can be filled in. We need more nurses who give a damn. You chose this profession, this, that is you. I know that you care, I know that you give a damn. Please do not let this test you and an industry fixated on a single test drive you away from your individual why and the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of thousands of people. If you have some study tips that work for you, please share them below in the comments. If you would like more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Let me end with a couple quotes from some of our nursing students and educators. When we asked one educator how they felt about the next gen coming, they said to answer your question, I don't feel prepared at all. It is hard teaching day to day and having to adjust to a new test. I'm sure most educators feel this way, but I guess that it is life and we must adjust. Look, we don't need to adjust to a test. We need to adjust our way of teaching and what we put as the focus in nursing education. Here's what some students said, that there's a lack of or improperly adjusted study resources and study guides and questions banks. A lack of preparedness as the majority of our exams and quizzes experienced throughout nursing school are question or case study based with multiple choice answers. Look, this whole thing has to change. I don't care how you're tested. I don't care if you're tested. I care that you're learning information and that you're learning in a way that will stick with you forever so that when you're on the floor, you're not trying to remember some sort of select all that apply question, but you're able to apply knowledge to patients. You guys, we love you. Go out and be your best selves today. Happy nursing.